And here I am. Hey guys, it's your buddy Jake Dominguez back, of course, with another movie review. Today, I'm going to review the much-anticipated film from me, The Lost City of Zed, or The Lost City of Z, witted and directed by James Gray. So let's get started. So The Lost City of Zed is, tells the story based on a true story of this guy played by Charlie Hunnam named Percy Fawcett. And he was asked by, like, the... What's it called? Like, you know, the National Geographic Society of its time, basically, to go and f to Bolivia and explore there. And while he's there, he becomes obsessed with finding what he believes is an ancient lost civilization called Zed. And he becomes obsessed with finding it. And over the course of the film, we see him do his best to try and find this city and it becomes a total obsession with him and it takes up like his entire life. I was really excited to see this film because the buzz going into it was very very high. I'm a big fan of uh, James Gray, the filmmaker behind this film. I absolutely love his film We Own the Night that stars Joaquin Phoenix and Mark Wahlberg. It's a great movie. It's a really good one. Um, a lot of people really love his movie The Immigrant which I've never seen. And, uh, well, he's made a few other great films, but, uh, he's really talented. And what I love about him as a filmmaker as, is that you can tell that he's almost very classical, for lack of a better term. He likes making movies that definitely feel like they would be made years ago. <laughs> and that's, I mean that as a great compliment. And The Lost City of Zed is a great example of that. Hey, by the way, they name, they name, uh... They pronounce Z as Z in the film. That's why I'm saying the Lost City of Z as opposed to the Lost City of Z. I, I don't know if it really matters. It's really confusing. I don't know. For the sake of this review, I'm saying the Lost City of Z. So, I don't know. Sorry. Anyway, but it definitely applies to this film. Because this movie definitely feels like it was made de decades ago. This feels like a classic movie. It feels very old-fashioned for lack of a better term. We don't get movies like this anymore. And I really enjoyed that while watching The Lost City of Zed. In fact, to be honest, I actually kind of loved this movie. I think it was pretty extraordinary. This is one of those movies that, to be honest, I'm still thinking about. And I saw the film a few days ago, and I'm still trying to put into words exactly my feelings on it. This is one of those movies that I need to think about a lot more. There's a ton more for me to think about. There's more that if I were to watch it again, that there's definitely a lot more I could probably observe and get when watching the movie. I can already tell this is one of those movies, and I almost debated waiting on this review a bit more to even go see the film a second time or something like that, just to kind of get more from it, because this isn't a review where I want to just to jump in and just start talking about it. I needed to ponder on the film for a little bit. Every once in a while you get a movie like that where you just need to sit down and think and ponder on it. This is one of those movies and I just needed to talk about it so that's why I turned on the camera and here I am. But it was an extraordinary movie and I'm going to do my best to get at my thoughts on it the best I can. First of all, I found this movie really moving and emotionally powerful based on the character himself of Percy Fawcett. I think I'm saying that right. As played by Charlie Hunnam. Now, I don't know too much about this actor. I know he was like in Sons of Anarchy, to my knowledge. I haven't seen a lot of movies with him, so I'm pretty unfamiliar with his filmography. Um, he is going to be in the new King Arthur movie, directed by Guy Ritchie, which I'm excited to review on this channel. But I gotta say... In this film, he is absolutely terrific. He gives a soulful, real performance. I loved his character. I was totally on his side the entire time. And when you watch this movie, you completely just feel for him. You relate to him. You want him to find the Lost City of Zed. I mean, it really is crazy how obsessed this guy was with finding this city. I mean, I won't get into spoilers, obviously, but you really root for him. You want him to find this city. It becomes an obsession for him. And even more than an obsession, he feels it's his destiny. He feels like he was made to find this city. And you're totally on his side. And you root for him and you feel sad for him. He's a really great character. He's really well written. And I mean, I've never gone out to find a lost civilization and failed a bunch of times before. But I gotta say, 
I could somewhat relate to him in a weird way. I mean, haven't we had times where we had this goal that we wanted so bad, and for whatever reason, it just kept like to take it away from us over and over again? I mean, from that perspective, I could relate to the guy, and uh, Charlie Hunnam really sells it. He really steals the show in this movie. In an otherwise beautifully shot movie, which I'll talk about more in a bit, he is the star, and he does a great job. And it's interesting, because this character is based on a real person. And this obviously is a very fictionalized version of his life, to my knowledge. It is based on a novel. And it's got, this movie's got a little bit of criticism from some critics and some people, because some people have debated whether this is a, you know, if this guy, Mr. Fawcett, was a guy who we should be like, for lack of a better word, um, betraying as a hero. You know, some people have said, you're not showing the full picture here, and for fair, which is totally fair enough. You know, colonialism and stuff like that is portrayed in this film as a huge, it's a huge subject, one with a, a lot of bad qualities to it. And that's a, something I'm not even going to get to in this review. That's a debate I don't even want to have. This is a family joke for Africa, for crying out loud. But in this film, I'm fine with the way it's portrayed. Because I think James Gray is just showing an idea, and he's showing a character in terms of an obsession that he has, and how that drives a person, how he wants to help his family, etc., etc. And it didn't bother me, because really this film is a character study. Yeah, it's an adventure film, yeah, it's a beautifully shot film, but really it's a character study about this guy. All the acting in this film, by the way, is incredible. One person that really impressed me is Robert Pattinson. When he was on screen, at first, I didn't even recognize the guy. I mean, he looks a little different in general, but his accent, like his voice, like I totally didn't recognize him. But he was fantastic. He gave a great performance. All Everyone in the film is good. The, even This is one of those movies where even the small character like parts that are in there for like 10 seconds or 2 minutes is fantastic. The acting in this film is great. What made me so excited to see in this movie, though was seeing Ian McDermott in this film. I had no idea he was in this movie, and when he showed up, I was like, oh my gosh, it's Ian McDermott. Like, I practically left in the theater. It made me so happy. I'm a big fan of his. You guys know I'm obviously a huge Star Wars fan, obviously. And to see him on a movie again made me so happy, and he was great in this film. But besides Charlie Hunnam, the one other person that really stole this movie was Sienna Miller, who plays his wife. Really great performance, really touching performance. And I don't want to get too much in this review for terms of spoilers, but she really broke my heart, and I really was fascinated, and I loved her character. And she played it terrifically well. How many times have we seen a movie like this where there's just the wife character? Like, there's just that one character that's the wife of the main character, and she just kind of stays at home and doesn't do too much except maybe cry and feel bad for the hero character. You know what I mean? Like, we've seen movies use that trope before, but this character and the way Sienna Miller betrays this character, I believe her name was Nina Fawcett, is just, it transcends that trope. It goes beyond that trope. It makes her a real involved character in this film, and she portrays him for her fantastically, and I loved that. Now, this film was actually shot in the jungles of the Amazon. And you can tell. There's no special effects stuff going on. You can tell they're in that jungle, in the river, in the forest of it all. I mean, it is insane. And I loved watching it on the big screen. You can tell that they were there. And it looks beautiful. This is a beautifully shot film. In terms of the editing, the cinematography... The way it's shot, the transitions between shots, it is extraordinarily well done. It is a beautiful film to look at. In fact, it kind of reminded me of Barry Lyndon, directed by Stanley Kubrick, the classic Stanley Kubrick film. In that film, which Stanley Kubrick, of course, made years ago, the late Stanley Kubrick, what a brilliant filmmaker, he used a lot of natural lighting. He used a lot of, like, candles to film scenes, that to be the lighting in those scenes in the film, to be exact. And I'm not sure if he did a similar thing here. I'm forgetting the director photographer's name for this film, unfortunately. Sorry about that. I'll put his name down in the description below. But I'm not sure they did something similar. If they used candles, a lot of natural lighting. But it sure did look like it. 
it, it, I, I don't want to make any statements I'm not sure about, but it certainly looked like it did in the film. And I could tell there was a big Barry Lyndon influence on the film. But it looked beautiful. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous film to look at. That combined with the great story that is epic in terms and just really huge and exciting makes this a pretty enjoyable time in the movies. Well, for me it was enjoyable. I, I loved it overall. But I will say, this is definitely not one of those movies that you go to to have fun. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't an entertaining, crowd-pleasing, blockbuster, popcorn movie. It's just not that. It's a very serious film. It's a character study in the inside an adventure film. But really, it's a very long film. It's two and a half hours long. And if you wanted to go have fun at the movies with your friends, you may not get it from this film. That's not a bad thing, but if for some filmgoers who are unfamiliar with that kind of filmmaking, they may have a hard time with this movie. I admit, when I first sat down with this film, and I sat down in the movie theater to watch it, that is, it took me a while to get to the rhythms of it. In fact, the film is like, what, two and a half hours long? It's pretty slow. It breathes. It takes its time. And at first, you know, sitting in the movie theater, I'm like, Wow, this is taking a while to get started, isn't it? At first, I thought the movie was the problem. I thought this first act was taking forever to finally get to the meat and potatoes of the story. But after I saw the film and I really began thinking about it, I realized that I was the problem. The movie, was no, there was nothing wrong with the first act, really. It was just taking me a while to get used to the rhythm of the film. That was the rhythm in which it wanted to go, and it was me who was having trouble catching up. And that's okay. But once I realized that, it made me appreciate the movie all the more. Because we don't see movies like that. It's something nice that we're seeing a slow film that breathes. And it made me appreciate that all the more when after watching this film and really begin pondering about it like I was talking about. All in all, guys, Lost City of Z is a pretty great movie. It feels like a classic film that's extraordinarily well made. I hope that people go see this movie and it leads James Gray to making more movies because he certainly hasn't got the acclaim that he deserves here in America. And I guess if I have any real criticisms about the movie, and it's almost a nitpick, I guess I do have one in, that, in the sense that this is a character study. It's about one guy. It's about one real person and it focuses on him. He's the main interest in the film. And that's the same of all main characters in general. But in this film particularly, we focus on his wants and desires and that sort of thing. And I guess I wouldn't have minded if we had more character moments for some of the other characters in the film. Even though all the performances are great and all that. we some of the, I would have liked to see some of the other characters and see why they wanted to find the Lost City of Zed. Like what was their motivation? What was their story? Now it's already a long film. It's two and a half hours long. And again, I get it, it's a character study based on this one character, but I'd say the two most interesting characters in the movie are Charlie Hunnam's character and Sienna Miller's character. Her especially, I found really moving in this film like I already talked about. I thought she was a fascinating character and that you could have done a whole movie, you could have done a whole movie just about her, to be honest. And I wouldn't have minded if they had some more character moments and that sort of thing for some of the other characters just to make them a little more interesting. I mean, it's almost a nitpick, but if I, had a, if, I, if I have a criticism with the film, I guess that would be it. And I'll be honest, even though I'm, I'm actually tempted to go see the film again for a second time in the theater, because I thought it was pretty fantastic, I don't know if this will be a film that I go... that will be a regular replay of movie for me. I don't know if this is a movie I see myself going and watching over and over again, just because it is a very slow film. It is a very difficult to watch film at times just because it's such a tragic story and so the replay value of this film may not be that high but is that a bad thing I, I don't think so I don't consider that a criticism as much as an observation because I mean I remember even Roger Ebert I'm gonna paraphrase what he said he said something to the effect of some great movies are only supposed to be watched once I think it was his It's a Wonderful Life review or something. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. Sorry, guys. But but for what it was, it was a pretty great movie. 
I'm excited to pick this up so I can add it to my collection. I'm going to give Lost City of Zed an A. A solid A. I would definitely recommend checking this one out, especially if you're interested in filmmaking and want to support movies like this that do not get made anymore that unfortunately they should get made today. I wish there were more films like this, so go and support this film. Guys, if you like this video, don't forget to like. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And never ever forget, I am your friend. I am always going to be there for you. Thank you so much for being my friends. You guys are awesome. Never forget that. And I will see you next time.